What's up everybody? This is the recap video for yesterday's not so awesome slate. Um, not really happy. I was feeling pretty confident heading into the uh, the late game and then Bradley Beal decided to do Bradley Beal things for once. First time in a week and a half just decides to shoot 37 times and you know Lillard kept pace which didn't exactly help I needed him to tank so I'm gonna go over the results in a little bit so I don't have the ridiculous graphics and stuff on the screen right now um, actually I'll do that first so you know if you remember we're gonna do started with a $400 bankroll we're gonna do 15% a night breaking it down completely we can make that a lot bigger um sixty dollars in entries we're down 2850 um none of it really went well if we want to see sort of that breakup on a day by day do, 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 do. that'll be the best way to do it um yeah, I just sort of took a bath across the board. Head-to-heads were okay. You know, we were down a little bit of 50-50s, just kind of reverse. But I happened to do okay in a five-man tournament, which is hilarious to think about. Just caught a good break. But ultimately, down. Um, and you guys will see why shortly. So we're adjusting the bankroll now. It's at the three... Ooh, can't talk. Haven't had any coffee yet. 367.40. So we're at $55 tonight instead of the 60, but I'm feeling pretty good about tonight. This feels like one of those nights where everything breaks correctly. But we shall see. So lineup was Westbrook, Van Vliet, DeRozan, Devin Booker, TJ Warren, Paul George, Pascal Siakam, ugh, Aminu, and Greg Monroe. Um, all of these guys had okay-ish ownership except for Van Vliet, which really surprised me. Um, you know, the way he'd been playing has been solid, and with the potential for blowout and him getting additional run, like, I thought it was a great spot. It's sort of the same reason that I went to Siakam. And in a way, it was right. Like, they were up 15-ish at the beginning of the fourth quarter, but the Suns kept it like just close enough that they never flipped that switch into the um, into the bench, and it never took off like I wanted it to. Because like Van, v Van Vliet and Siakam played okay, but Siakam got 15 minutes. If he plays five more minutes, you know it it might not look as bad. And they're probably five more minutes without a Baca on the floor. Um, just didn't break the way that I thought it would. And that one actually confuses me. I'm su I'm really surprised that Pascal Siakam only got 15 minutes last night. Really surprised. That seems like the perfect opportunity to give him more time and to rest Ibaka. But I don't know. I guess just because Ibaka was playing as well as he was. Let's run through the uh, the positions. It should be pretty quick just since it's three games. Um, top three point guards were all over it. There wasn't much to pick from. At the bottom, but <clears throat> Westbrook put up 69.6 in 38 minutes, hit six and a half. Um, in my opinion, I had to have him in cash last night. I'm glad I did, although I guess maybe I'm not. <laughs> or maybe I would have won money. Um, and then Dame and Lowry, both either 5.4x or 5.2x. You couldn't really go wrong. Um, I didn't really like Lowry going in the last night. I liked DeRozan a lot more, which was fine, uh, but turns out you wanted them both. And Dame, I just couldn't get it to fit. It would have required me to have... Like, basically, I would have had to be right about OG Ananobi, Evan Turner, you know. that they, they were the two that were popping up, and that's... I just wasn't confident there. It turns out I should have been. Um, so, yeah, Lowry ended up being a, a pretty nice play, and he's been playing really well over the past two weeks. And then... You know, Sadoransky, Rubio, Mike James, Van Vliet, all bust. Tyler Ulis bust. Um, 
Well, I can't say Van Vliet was a bust. He hit 4.9. He had 20 and 21 minutes. I'm not upset about it. I just, I saw that for what might have been, and it was not. Um, if you needed anybody at point guard from the bottom, you needed Tim Frazier. But with the ownership, the ownership was spread between Westbrook, Lillard, and Lowry in pretty big numbers. So it was very minimal otherwise. Shooting guard, same thing. Top shelf was amazing. DeRozan, Beal, Mitchell, and Booker all hit value. Um, DeRozan put up 49 in 34 minutes. I'm plenty happy with that. 5.7x. He's 31% owned. So that was even more beneficial. But none of it really mattered because uh, Bradley Beal, he was 15-ish percent, 20%, somewhere in that neighborhood in my double up owned. 55.6 points in 43 minutes. He put up 7.3x. I want to say that it was 37 shot attempts. I think I still have it up on my phone. But it's just like, <sighs> can't predict ball type shit. Yeah, 21 of 37 from the field. Next most attempts on the team was Markeith Morris at 10. So, I don't, I don't know. And then Lillard was a bit jelly. Um, so, he was shooting the ball pretty heavily too. But Donovan Mitchell put up 48 in 36 minutes. I That really surprised me. I, I didn't expect him to be as dynamic against Oklahoma City as he was. But, man, that, that kid's not afraid. I like him a lot. That uh, that Jazz-Nuggets trade, I think they, that's how they ended up with Mitchell in, in the Trey Lyles deal. Whew, does that look fucking terrible? And then Booker put up 45 and 39 minutes, 6.3x. Uh, I'm plenty happy there. He was 66% owned, so... You know, four of my guys were all pretty much locked in across the board for people. Um, McCollum and Burks both underperformed, and you needed Roberson if you wanted any value. I don't think that anybody was actively on Troy Daniels. Um, Norm Powell was someone that some people were talking about. He laid a major egg, which was surprising. Again, but they just they played a short bench. You know, they they played heavy minutes. The starters. Small forward, this one bums me out a lot, but this is where you need to find the value. Um, Paul George was garbage. 26 points in 39 minutes. Uh, their offense is so bad. I watched most of the second half of that game, and it's just the same action over and over and over again. Russ at the top. Uh... Paul George loops to the baseline, comes off a double screen to the wing. If they hedge out on that um, and Russ can't throw that pass over the top, then they work some sort of two-man game with, you know, a Steven Adams screen or Mello in isolation. And then if Paul George doesn't get the ball on that on, on his um, on his roll around the, the the double screen, like he just he's out of the play. He just stands on the wing and doesn't move. And they, I mean, I can't, it shocked me at one point how many times in a row they did it. Because it was like 15. And then once, I was like, oh, this is going to be a different look. No, they just went the, the other direction. So uh, they tricked my stupid ass, but I assume that uh, no one's having much problem with uh, with their offense. I gotta sneeze. Big sneeze. Um, so anyway, Paul George sucked, Otto Porter sucked, 24 points in 30 minutes, you know, I was on the fence of whether I wanted to go with TJ Warren or Porter in my last small forward spot, or maybe get off of George so I can get into Lillard, which I guess would have been better off, but I probably would have ended up with, well, I'll tell you who I would have ended up with, um, I would have ended up with Joe Ingles who I liked in the morning, had 29 points in 34 minutes. I never really looked at Oubre um, or Josh Jackson or CJ Miles. And Tabo was game time decision up until Locke. So I, I know um, I was seeing him in a lineup or two, but I mean, they were talking like he might not, like he was probably not going to play. And then he ended up playing in a huge way. And then OG had a big game, but 
TJ Warren got the gate. Two technicals, eight points in 23 minutes. He was 75% owned, 77% owned. Um, so that sucked. It could have been worse. You know, it's never too big of a deal when a guy highly owned gets sunk like that. But at the same time, to get a 1.2x is still a problem. Um, it really puts you behind the eight ball. It, it takes like the upside out of everything. You shouldn't have any. You, you should still be able to cash pretty comfortably as long as you don't make mistakes like drafting or rostering Paul George. But he, Paul George, has killed me, and I'm I'm surprised at his ownership. But I guess people made the decision of going like Dame or Lowry. If I would, oh man, if I would have liked Lowry, I probably would have got off of George. And that would have been, well, it would have ended up being TJ Warren and Ingles. But I didn't like Lowry, so I couldn't make that salary fit. And that leads to Paul George being 29% owned. As soon as those ownership percentages came out and I saw it, I was like, okay, well, everything I need hinges on Paul George. Because if Paul George can hit 5x, like just from the way the ownership breaks, I'm going to be in really good shape. Not so much. Then a power forward. I don't even want to talk about this. This one's going to break my heart. Uh, Favors played 22 minutes, put up 19. He should not have been in play for anybody with Gobert back and them still trying to you know, iron out rotations. Um, Melo ended up getting to 5x. He played like shit the entire game and then had a couple buckets late that got him some points. He's got no explosion any longer. Like, zero. He made a move to the baseline and went up like he was going to hammer with two hands and he got to the point where like I would get if I tried to do that which was three inches short of where you need to be to be able to hammer that and he had someone coming so he was able to like lay it in and get the bucket but he just looked like father time had zapped him of all of his athleticism it was really sad then we get to Obaka which this one's gonna haunt me because it probably cost me being positive for the day. Abaka put up 39.7 in 32 minutes, and he's been getting an increased run. So I think the Raptors are starting to tighten up the rotation and stretch their their bigger by bigger guys. I mean, like they're they're starting to stretch out their starters. I waffled between Abaka and Siakam. Because I thought, you know, I had Ibaka for 26 minutes and Siakam for 23. Like, they were they were neutral guys to me. And in my mind, you know, Siakam's going to play regardless. But the upside was there that if the game went haywire, he was going to get run. He had done it, you know, a week ago in their big blowout where he ended up playing big minutes and playing a lot of the fourth quarter because they were whooping their ass. And I was like, okay, well... You know, worst case scenario, he'll be right around value and play like, you know, 23 minutes or so. Best case scenario, he ends up playing 30 minutes because they blow them out. And, you know, Obaka doesn't get the burn. Oh boy, was I wrong about that whole scenario. Because he didn't get the burn. He didn't get playing time. He played 15 minutes. Serge Ibaka was like 70% owned. So when I saw that, it was like, okay... Well, you know, that's going to get interesting. And Siakam started hot. Like, he had most of that 21.7 in the first half, even in the first quarter, or late first quarter, early second quarter. So I got really excited, but Serge goes 32 minutes, puts up 39.7, and it just makes this look awful. It was really hard to recover from that. I think this, the strategy was sound, but if they're switching their rotations and tightening them up a little bit, it's just it's just weird. Uh, Markeith Morris and Aminu both hit value. Um, so if you were on either of those guys, you're probably pretty happy. Um, I thought Jerebko was an interesting GPP play, but that never materialized. If you had Mike Scott or Jared Dudley, good for you, but I doubt it. And then we get to centers. Um, Rudy Gobert was not rosterable at 8,000 with a quote-unquote minutes limit. Nurkic and Adams both had solid nights. Um, you you wouldn't have been mad that you paid up for them, but this was a night where you probably were on uh, 
Greg Monroe, who put up 33.5 fantasy points in 25 minutes, 7.4x. He was 69.7% owned. 69. <laughs> God, I'm such a loser. Oh, my God. Uh, so he was the guy that most people were on. But Gortat played well. Alex Len still hit value in his limited minutes. Jakob Pertl, who was uh, questionable for a lot of the day with an illness, still got the value. So the top half of center was a, a wasteland, but you wanted to be down here, and most people were on Monroe. So I finished with 296.7. Uh, the minutes were pretty close. I actually ended up having you know a better night than I expected. Um, but... George sunk me. The TJ Warren technicals didn't help. And the uh, the Raptors game just didn't play out like I thought it would. Or hoped it would, at least. And then, uh, once I saw the ownership on Lillard, which was like 60%, I knew that I was cheering against the Blazers. And then Beal decided to just, you know, basically guarantee anybody that rostered him a spot in the, above the cash line. Just to be able to get... 7.3x on like 10% ownership or 15% ownership. It's giant. So, like I said, you know, we looked at it before. Down to start. I mean, relatively horrible day yesterday, which we'll deal with. Um, that sort of happens on uh, short slates. You know, they're a little bit more extreme. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to complain too much. I'm anxious to see the relationship of ROI and average score. That'll be nice to see stretched out um, over the next couple months. What did I do here? Sport to the top. Type. There we go. But today is another day. Today's a good slate. So um, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, I would suggest that you also like it, because that would be more beneficial to me. Uh, subscribe if you'd like. Uh, I do these recap videos every morning. Um, at least every morning that I play. Um, follow me on Twitter. Link's up there. Check out my website. I think I'm pointing in the wrong direction, but whatever. Patreon. Or if it's over here, go, go that way. Do all those things. Uh, check me out on the Reddit DFS board. Um... Happy to answer questions there on Twitter. Uh, we'll be live before lock tonight at 6 o'clock. So uh, come and hang out. It's a fun time. Bye-bye.